that means that their position of being second largest importer of oil products into the United States will simply completely disappear off the charts. So now let's come to a country we know much better, the United States of America. We have here a real peak also, which has been in formation since 1971. The oil production has been increasing until that date. Following that date, we have a decline of approximately 55% as we observe the actual oil production in the United States today, around 5 million, 5 million barrels per day. Um, this is a big aggregate of all the oil fields and oil regions of the United States all pulled together. The summary of a whole lot of individual peaks also gives you a chart which gives you a peak. A few comments on the chart of um, the United States oil production in 1956. Professor Marion King Hubbard predicted a peak for oil production in the United States for 1971. He was off by just a few months. Uh, he's basing that on a statistical curve, which is a bell curve, which is quite symmetrical. Um, the oil production in the US has indeed decreased by more than 50% since that date. And if we push the bell curve a bit further, all you need to do is to read what has happened on the left hand side of the chart, which should um, happen on the right hand side. The peak is also an indication that half of the known oil reserves have been extracted and uh, that the amount of oil which can be extracted on the, in the future uh, should be approximately equivalent of what was pulled out of the ground uh, on, in the first half. This also means that the United States of America is going to be more and more dependent on foreign oil. Um, the United States is today consuming approximately 10% less than three years ago, which is good. Nevertheless, the effect on imports remains the same. The United States still needs just as much oil from abroad than it did a few years ago. Now a summary of all the different countries which have gone through their peak in the year where this happened. We showed you very early the chart of the oil production in Austria 1955, then Texas 1971 which actually created the peak for the United States in 1971. Then we go through um, Alaska 1989 for example, uh, countries such as Syria 1995, uh, Colombia 99, UK 99, Norway 2001, and so on. As we indicated before, the sum of bell-shaped curves will come out to be a bell-shaped curve and there will be a point where the world will hit the peak of that bell-shaped curve and that is peak oil for the whole world. Peak oil for the whole world according to a few specialists has already happened. According to T. Boone Pickens the world oil production has peaked end of 2007. For conventional oil, Professor Matt Simmons has announced it has happened in 2005 already. In yellow you have the conventional oil and in gray you have the production of all sorts of heavy oils including oil sands. We can debate whether the world has gone into peak oil, yet the main data we can get indicates that that the world oil production has gone into 
a terminal decline. It's not very visible yet, but a number of indications tend to confirm that. It is still possible to increase the world oil production. Nevertheless, according to some reliable sources such as the International LNG Association, the increase of production happens after some large investments and the number which is quoted by them is that the world needs 20 trillion dollars worth of investments into oil production in order to really see an increase in production on a worldwide basis. Now we're going to work a bit on the forecasts of peak oil. Which countries have recently peaked? Which countries are likely to peak in the next few years? We know that 94 countries have had oil reserves ever 